We love Tone & Fire plugins, no doubt. Lockness is one of my favorite saturators slash distortion plugins. You saw me using Black UV2 in so many of my courses and mixing videos and many other plugins in their list. They just came out with something pretty cool and pretty impressive, I gotta say. Their own version of the holy grails of all compressors, the Fairchild. Actually, not one, but four different units emulated in their Firechild. Let's take a look at it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixfest TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugin special offers and discounts, and of course, link to the Fire Child from Tone & Fire, which is just one of the many, $30,000 many, prizes that are up for grab for you guys for the new Bella Kelly remix contest that we launched just a few days ago. If you missed the biggest event of the year on the channel, the link is going to be in the info box down below and you can win not just this plugin, but the entire analog bundle from Tone and & Fire and another $30,000 in prizes from all the other companies participating. If you want to support the channel, but most important, if you really want to learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button, become a Mixbus TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses, start to finish on many different genres, mastering, special videos, special giveaways, and a lot more. You also get mixed consultations with me via Skype or email. Let's get to the video. All right, all right, all right. Tone and Fire, Fire Child. They model not one, but three different analog hardware units with different tube life stages, with slightly different electrical components, and they sample the three units at different gain stages using dynamic convolution technology. This makes for a pretty good picture of how a real unit saturate, behave, and work, but they model three of them, so you have a much wider array of sounds and nuances. Plus, they added a non-tube version to have a cleaner option for the same type of compression, which I think is pretty cool. And they also added a bunch of extra features, which I think are pretty much essential for modern music. Let's take a look at the controls. Just like the real thing, we have the two big view meter, the output gain that you use to compensate for the input gain that you use to drive the unit harder and to get more saturation and more tube sound from it. Threshold to set the amount of compression that you want. And then we have the three presets with different release settings sampled from the real unit and each model and we have the models right here on the left, A, B, and C, and off, are slightly different because they model different units. They also added an extremely useful, I wanna say, knee control that goes from hard to soft, a mix knob for parallel compression on board, a sidechain gain, and the essential for modern music, low pass and high pass filter that you can activate with this button here. Without further ado, let's see how it sounds. I will start with kind of a weird sound, but I found that by using this sound, it's gonna be very easy for you guys to hear the differences in tone between the three models. And of course, you can use this plugin just as a color box. Even without compression, you get the three different sounds, the tube saturation, which you can also dial in, not only by using the input gain, but also by turning the bias knob right here below the model selector. Let's start with A. Right off the bat, you hear A is the thickest of all three models. C is the brightest and the one that seems to have a little more tube crunch. And I'm running both the input and the bias hot, compensating with the output gain. So we really can hear the differences. B is kind of an in-between between the two. It's not as thick as A and it's not as bright as C. It's kind of an in-between. Another pass really quick. All right, it's pretty obvious. Let's start compressing. And in this video, I'll also tell you uh, a little bit how to use a Fairchild compressor, at least what I like it for and what are my favorite settings. Even though we have somewhat limited controls on this compressor, it's kind of the way it is. We also have added controls within it. So let's start with this one. All right. 
right, I want to engage the sidechain filter for this and get rid of the low end in the detector so it doesn't react to the low end too much. I'll put the knee at zero, so hard, and we'll go from there. All right, a lot more thicker the sound, even with the B settings, which is not the thickest. And this track doesn't really need compression. We'll go to more organic sounds later, but I just want to show you the basics here. Uh, in this case, it reacts a little too abruptly. So when something like this happens and you don't want to change the attack and release, otherwise it gets a little too slow, you use the knee for that. And you will notice that when you make the knee softer, it's almost like you lower the threshold. The compressor starts reacting to material that didn't pass the threshold yet. So that's why it's softer, okay? If this is the line of your hard knee, right? Make it softer, make it so the compressor start compressing or better reacting to the material that did not pass the threshold yet. And this makes the compression softer and less nervous, okay? Let's go to a more organic sound, like a drum. Now, I'm not personally a big fan of the Fairchild style compression on drum, but it can be interesting. And in this case, we'll pick the C, we'll drive the bias hard to get tube sound, and you will hear between model A and model C how much difference there is in how much room sound is being brought up by the compression, okay? You hear the massive difference between the three models is not subtle at all. I'm now pushing the bias so we can really hear the difference between the models. In this case, with the bias pushed, C is kind of eating a little bit of low end, something you have to keep in mind while learning a new unit, where B is giving you more thickness and then we'll go to A and see what happens. If you hear the A on drums is pretty apparent. It has this pretty obvious roll off on the on the top end. It might be uh, the oldest unit they modeled. We don't know, but it's pretty apparent. So this could be very useful if you have harsh material, for example, or to add warmth, which in some cases is simply just rolling off the the top end. And let's try without tubes. Very cool in off position, so without the tube modeling, uh, we have a much cleaner sound and it's faithful to the original frequency balance that the, the material has. Something I didn't mention is this plugin has also oversampling, and you can see here. Let's start trying it on my favorite uses for the Fairchild style a compressor, like bass, for example. Mm -hmm. 
right in this case you can see my settings the c brings up a little bit of mid-range and more excitement to this base without eating up low end here actually it seems a little bit thicker let's see if we can make it even better by engaging the side chain here and you can see for this base i'm going with a slower release settings and a very soft knee I really like the sound of it. The difference is pretty obvious. It just makes this bass really thick and solid. I'm running the bias hot. To me, this plugin performs really well when you drive the tubes, but let's back off a little bit. Very cool. You can see with this topology of compressors, I exaggerated the compression to show you that there are really no artifacts. I sped up the release and I upped the threshold and it's still very gentle kind of compression. Let's go to vocals, which is another of my favorite application for the Fairchild style compression. It will be interesting on vocals to hear the various models. I'm going to start with all and just put everything default here. I feel that isolation. I feel that isolation I try to shine Cause you say you need a star But you keep snuffing up the light of my spark Won't you put me in your heart We hide what we truly are I'll meet you in the dark I'll meet you in the dark I like the kind of squeeze that it has especially in that part when she goes up. You can hear the compression, but it has that classic sound of sitting the vocal a little back, and I really like it. Won't you put me in your heart? We hide what we truly are. I'll meet you in the dark. All right, without, let's try without it really quick. We truly are. I'll meet you in the dark. We hide what we truly are. I'll meet you in the dark We hide what we truly are I'll meet you in the dark To me, that is a very familiar sound. Let's add the tube saturation. We hide what we truly are I'll meet you in the dark We hide what we truly are I'll meet you in the dark all right, in this case, I think the settings, the release is a little too fast. So I'm going to go to two, which is usually my favorite for vocals. I'm going to lower the threshold a little bit and up the knee, which for vocals is always a good idea not to have like a super hard vocal, unless you go for the limiting style compression, like 1176 or 168. I try to shine because you, you see. I try to shine, cause you say you need a star. I try to shine, cause you say you need a star. But you keep snuffing up the light of my spark. Won't you put me in your heart? We hide what we truly are. I'll meet you in the dark. Yeah, I really like how it sits the vocal back. I want to try to push the bias, cause I heard a really nice saturation right there. I feel that isolation I try to shine Cause you say you need a star But you keep snuffing up the light of my spark Won't you put me in your heart We hide what we truly are I'll meet you in the dark Really cool, let's change model I'll meet you in the dark Cause it's a lie when I'm in your arms Without compression Cause it's a lie when I'm in your arms I'm not fooling with level here Cause it's a lie when I'm in your arms I'll meet you in the dark 
Is it a lie when I'm in your arms? I'll meet you in the dark. Is it a lie when I'm in your arms? I'll meet you in the dark. All right, another use of the Fairchild on vocals, and we go to another vocals, is to use it more as a leveler. So I'll do this on this other vocal here. I'm gonna still run C, which seems my favorite for vocal. I'm just gonna use a pretty soft knee and kind of slow settings. What you want here is basically the compressor to always compress and just gently leveling the performance as opposed to be fast reacting to events. All I ever wanted was to stand my ground. Big words to confuse and spin your mind around. But every little step just takes me further down I found my soul just waiting in the lost and found Babe, it's nothing you did So stop talking stupid We gave it a taste, now it's done I'm out for self-healing You ain't got that We gave it a taste, now it's done. I'm out for self-healing, you- You heard that vowel, how softer in a good way is with the compressor that keeps everything always a little bit compressed without it. We gave it a taste, now it's done. I'm out for self-healing. We gave it a taste, now it's done. I'm out for self-healing, you ain't got that feel- It's still there, but it's a little rounder. It's not that explosive. And for a performance like this, I kind of like it. Really like this plugin, it's really cool. Let's try a male vocal instead, and then we do acoustic guitar. I see that your armor is thick And I'm not first pick, but I'll bend To the anatomy you know you need so let me be what you ask me, please. So charge down your arm to my chest and fix what needs fixing. It's really good at leveling out the performance and somewhat, even if it's colored, is a very natural type of compression, which is what would you expect from the unit? I don't want to say musical because it kind of sounds like a car salesman, but it really is what it is. So charge down your arm to my chest and fix what needs fixing. Listen to how everything is right there in the pocket without, instead. And fix what needs fixing. Right there, that passage, the second need. And fix what needs fixing. And fix what needs fixing. Cause you are what I believe in. What I believe in, what I believe in. Yeah, I really like how it sits back this uh, strong passages. It's definitely a dark sounding compressor, warm if you want. And even at the C settings, which is the brightest one, it's just the nature of the units that they model, the nature of the compressor, the hardware model. Acoustic guitar. They also have a bunch of presets, bass, drum, guitar, keys, master, orchestra, vocals. And I'm gonna just start with a preset and tweak from there. AC, acoustic guitar, strumming. Let's see how it sounds.
really cool both the action and the color you hear uh the mid-range on this acoustic guitar when i push the bias on the c model Very cool. Probably the most versatile Fairchild in plug-in form out there with the different models, the Nicotrol that proved to be extremely useful. I think this is it for this video. This was Tone Empire Firechild new Fairchild emulation plugin. The link is going to be in the info box down below. Don't miss the chance of winning not just this, but the entire bundle from Tone Empire by entering Bella Kelly's remix contest. All the links are going to be in the info box down below. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already. Stay safe and see you next time. So